today's video, I'm going to share with you how I helped my two dogs learn to love grooming as well. So if you would like to know how to do that or what that entails, make sure to keep on watching this video. Zen Dog, where I coach you on how to help your dog love grooming. On this channel, I'm going to tell you everything that I know about dog training and dog grooming and all of it in between. So if your dog is afraid of grooming or if you're worried that they don't like going to the groomer or if you're seeing signs or if you just have that gut feeling, make sure to subscribe to this channel because you're going to see a lot of information and help about how to get your dog happier and stress-free at the groomer. So I have two dogs. I have a Siberian Husky. She is around 11, possibly older than 11. I'm not really sure. She <clears throat> did not like to be brushed. She would whip her head around with an open mouth and like put her teeth on my hands and on the brush. She did not like to be brushed. Not surprising because I adopted her, but she hated having her nails trimmed. It was like the biggest fight ever. But I wasn't a dog trainer at this time. I wasn't even a dog groomer. I was just this 20 year old kid who was in college to be a teacher and I got this dog that was way more energy than I was really prepared for and I was just trying to help her, you know, have her nails done and it was a struggle. So it was definitely something that I found important right away and we started working on it, which was kind of how I got into dog training, but I'll talk about more of that in a minute. My other dog is a Chinese Crested Powder Puff. Her name is Luna. She actually was born with the genes that meant she had all of her hair. So I always knew that I would have to groom Luna a lot, um, especially if I wanted her to keep her full coat, which when I first got her, I thought, yeah, I want my dog to have all of her hair, which is what everybody wants. Everybody with a long haired dog um, and their first few months of having it and their first few grooming appointments, they have this real strong desire to have all of the hair. They want their dog to look like their puppyhood and just never change. And I was that person too. And it's totally possible. You can have your dog in a long coat, so I'm not discouraging that. But I quickly realized that it was a lot of work and I was a groomer. I was a professional groomer working in the industry and I still was surprised by how much I had to wash her and dry her because in the grooming industry we see dogs every six weeks that's what we tell people that's like the most common schedule but a more frequent schedule is better so if you were ever wondering how often to get your dog groom um, or to go to the groomer more frequently is better so I actually wash and dry Luna every single week, sometimes more if she gets really dirty. And I'll link some videos up in the corner for you that you can watch, which is exactly how I wash, blow dry, brush, and finish a bath for my little dog. So you can watch those if you have one too. Then I found that Luna was starting to become scared of grooming, even though I was a groomer and I'm a dog trainer and I have all this knowledge about how to help them like it. Socializing your dog to bathing and grooming it should definitely be taken with the utmost seriousness that you can because it's no joke once that socializing period is over. And if you'd like more information about socializing your dog and the socialization period, make sure to leave a comment below. And if you are interested in that, I'll definitely make a video on that as well because I was really surprised by what actually happened when I thought I was socializing Luna. Luna actually started to become scared of grooming even though I had her from a puppy and we've done a lot of work. So I'm gonna explain more about that and the things that she's scared of and how we make that um, as positive as we can. And again, if you wanna watch the videos up in the corner, you'll be able to see things that I do during the bath time that really help with that. I really got into grooming because I had this one dog training client and if you can relate to this, please leave a comment below because believe it or not, I've seen this happen um, a few more times in my grooming career, but back when I was a brand new dog trainer, someone called me because their dog needed to be sedated to be groomed and he almost died. His name was Jackson, I will never forget him. He was this old cranky senior Shih Tzu that hated grooming because he was never given the choice and the option to say whether or not he enjoyed it and he d didn't get the opportunity as a puppy to enjoy it through socializing or through training exercises. He, like most dogs, like a lot, a lot of dogs, because again, I've seen this in the industry, 
are just kind of like thrust into grooming and expected to deal with it and it doesn't work out the way you think it is and we'll talk a lot more about that on this channel I'm gonna have videos coming up on stress signals during grooming and what that actually looks like and what that actually means so again if you're interested in that or if that sounds like a good idea let me know in the comments I took her on as a client and I trained her and him I coached her and I trained him on how to be calm and relaxed for grooming desensitizing him quite a bit to the grooming process the grooming tools and all of that she bought a table she bought the clippers she really took on grooming him super seriously and that made me realize that there's a big um, opportunity to help people just like her more people like her so not only did I get really invested in learning how to train these things, but I went to grooming school also. I went back to school, I went back to a program, and I became a groomer, and I understood that just learning how to do it wasn't enough. I had to have experience. So after completing the school, I went and got a job as a groomer and still did training on the side. So I was still able to do both. But I saw a lot of things during my f f over five years of working in salons and being a groomer that have really led me to today, which is what I'm explaining to you about why it's important to me to help your dog love grooming. It is not something that um, needs to be forced upon them. It is not something that needs to be scary and we can definitely help your dog like it. Um, my two dogs have really been enjoying all the cooperative care grooming and um, we're getting really far with that. I did leave grooming. I got to a point where um, I felt like I was a really good groomer. I learned enough about the grooming process and actually physically doing it, but there was this like I said, this huge disconnect between the groomer and the client and the poor pet was stuck in the middle, just kind of, you know, not being helped at all because when I was in groomer shoes, I had to, I had to get as much done as I could. I could not afford time or money um, to, t to work with that client and help their dog love grooming. First of all, they had to want that. They had to know that it was going to make a big impact on their dog. They had to understand within themselves that it was really important for their dog's well-being to not only receive grooming, but to like it because they have this whole long lifetime with their dog as long as their dog would live. And from experience, I will tell you that if it's not getting better, it is getting worse. It cannot stay in plateau forever. Um, and what I mean by that is the, the emotions and the behaviors around grooming. If it's not getting better, and if you're not helping it get better and really um, cultivating that, the feelings and emotions around grooming are going to get worse. And I'll explain why. I have future videos coming up all about this. Um, so we're gonna talk about that more. So what I really got super invested in was cooperative care. If you've never heard of cooperative care, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell um, on my channel because I'm gonna explain all of this in my next video in detail. But cooperative care is exactly how I helped my dogs learn to love grooming. We are still training a lot of things, but we've definitely got some progress. Training never stops because learning never stops. We can definitely help your dog learn to love grooming it's, it's fun, it's easy, it's so rewarding, and it's actually really exciting even though the training sessions can look kind of boring. But that's the exciting part is that it looks boring because they are enjoying it. They are you know, comfortable with what's happening, they're tolerating the process, and it doesn't look dramatic. It doesn't look like a big deal. They're not, you know, struggling, they're not pulling, they're not fighting, and that's cooperative care. Cooperative care is a training technique, it's training exercises to show your dog like everything's good, everything's fine, and all of this is gonna be great for you because you're gonna get rewarded you know, through the process and at the end, and all the while, your dog got their nails trimmed, they got brushed, they got their bath, and they're looking good and they're feeling good. So if you want more information about cooperative care, again, please subscribe and hit the notification bell because next week we're gonna talk all about that. And in the meantime, if you're looking for more information, make sure to watch these two videos. I'm gonna link some things here for you and definitely check out my grooming at home series and you'll see more stuff there. All right, thanks. See you next time.